Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic metals and our metal for today will be the extraction of aluminium. So we are going to look at the processes of extracting aluminium and then we are going to look at the properties of aluminium. So first you uh, discuss what some of the ores of aluminium. Aluminium forms around like 7% of the earth crust, so it's very common, it's a very common metal. And some main ores are bauxite. Actually, bauxite forms one of the main ores that we are going to use even in the process. We have mica, we have china clay, we have cor corodum. So those are the main ores, but remember bauxite is the main that we are going to be working with today. So the next thing we're going to look at is a chemical test of ammonia, so uh, aluminium. So if the ore containing aluminium is crushed into a powder and dilute uh, nitric acid is added to the powder, so and then you filter the solution, uh, so you 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 are able to get a solution containing aluminium ions. So when a few drops of sodium hydroxide is added dropwise, still excess. And then the same is repeated with ammonia solution. What you notice is with the sodium hydroxide, the white precipitate will form with a few drops, which is going to be soluble in excess. And then with the ammonia solution, the white precipitate will be formed with a few drops, but it's going to be insoluble. So remember, aluminium forms a, a part of the ions that are amphoteric. Uh, so they usually behave that way with sodium hydroxide. So it's part of the three ions that are behave differently when you look at the qualitative analysis of sodium hydroxide. So extraction of bauxite is done in two processes. There's the purification of bauxite and then the electrolysis of the bauxite. So in the purification, uh, the chief O uh, so some uh, chief impurities uh, are like silica and iron 3 oxide. So basically what you want to do, you want to ensure we remove this uh, impurity so that we can remain with higher concentration of the um, ore that we want to now extract using electrolysis. So this purification is all about removing the impurities. So the oxide is ground and treated with sodium hydroxide hot sodium hydroxide. So what happens since aluminium hydrox uh, aluminium uh, oxide is uh, photoelectric in nature, it's going to react with sodium hydroxide uh, and then to form sodium aluminate. And that is the equation. We repeated this equation when we were looking at qualitative analysis. You can go back and check that. So when you look at the impurities, we have silica and iron 3 oxide. So what happens, also silica reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium silicate, as you can see in the equation. But now the iron 3 oxide does not react with sodium hydroxide, so it remains as a residue, a red mud, and it is filtered off. So now we have sodium aluminate and we have sodium silicate in solution. So the intention of the next step is to remove the sodium silicate. So carbon four oxide is bubbled to the filtrate and then is followed by addition of aluminium hydroxide, which is referred to as seeding. This is a form of a precipitation where you use a pure form of the substance that you want to precipitate. So what happens when aluminium hydroxide is carbon dioxide is bubbled in aluminium hydroxide or the sodium aluminate, it forms aluminium hydroxide in solid state, it, it solidifies it, and then the remaining bits, they react to the aluminium hydroxide and they are, they are crystallized. So you can see this is the seeding process, uh, sodium aluminate reacts with water, um, uh, to form sodium hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide. Then the last bit is the ignition or decomposition of the aluminium hydroxide to give aluminium oxide and water. So this is what we want for our next uh, process. So electrolysis of now the aluminium oxide, it usually has a very high melting point of 2000 and 15 degrees Celsius, so a lot of heat is required to melt it. 
uh, and the molten compound is usually very a very poor conductor of heat. So what is done instead? It's a, a cryolite is added in the mixture. This is a mixture of sodium aluminum fluoride. Uh, it's mixed in the oxide, and this helps to lower the melting point from 2,015 degrees Celsius to 800. It's important you note these temperatures that have been used and how uh, they are reduced with the process. So at this low temperature, the molten oxide now can be able to conduct electricity. So this is a setup that is used for the electrolysis of aluminum oxide or the bauxite. So you can see the anodes and the cathodes, but you discuss it in detail. So the molten alumina is mixed with bauxite, mixed with bauxite is then electrolyzed. Uh, in a steel can lined with carbon graphite as the cathode. So you can see the cathode, this is the steel, and then this is the graphite lined with it. This forms the cathode, and then the anode now forms the graphite uh, 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 graphite electrodes that are dipped in the molten solution forms the anode. Other than being an electrolyte, the graphite cathode lining also prevents alloy formation. So this helps it not to form an alloy with steel because it's very uh, possible for that reaction to occur. So the anodes are also made of graph graphite deep into the steel tank at an intervals. So let's look at the reactions that occur in the electrol in the cell. So aluminum oxide dissociates to give aluminum ions and oxide ions. So apart from aluminum ions and oxide ions, you also have sodium ions. Remember we added uh, the cryolite. We also have the fluoride ions in solution. So remember that. So when it comes to what is going to be um, discharged at what point, so at the cathode, first of all, at the cathode, the silver white metal will quickly become dull because aluminum ions move to the cathode and are reduced to form aluminum metal. And then uh, this is the equation at the cathode. And then the equation at the anode is ox oxide ions are preferred to be discharged. So they discharge to give uh, two electrons which travel now to the aluminum. So the resultant oxygen gas reacts further with graphite to form carbon four oxide. So this is due to the high temperatures in this process. So more or less, more like the carbon electrodes need to keep on being replaced because they usually keep reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. So you see that in the anode, oxide ions are discharged to give oxygen gas. And then in the cathode, the aluminum ions are preferred. So the aluminum ions in solution will gain electrons to form aluminum solid. So the cryolites usually add sodium ions and fluoride ions into the electrolyte, just like we said. Thus, the anions are the oxide ions and the fluoride ions. However, oxygen is preferred over fluorine because you see on the anions we want on the anode we want the one that has a higher tendency of losing electrons. Fluorine is a very strong oxidizing agent in comparison to oxygen, so that's why oxygen is preferred. And then at the cathode, aluminum is discharged instead of sodium. All right, so this is just a, a, a summary of what we have discussed. So as you can see, we start with the bauxite containing impurities of iron 3 oxide, uh, titanium oxide, silicon 4 oxide. And the first thing that happens is the organic matters are initially removed. And then when they are removed, they are reacted with sodium hydroxide, as we saw. And sodium reacts with aluminum to form sodium aluminate and sodium silicate. And, and uh, three oxide and titanium oxide are removed as the red mud. And then uh, the silicate, that is sodium aluminate and sodium silicate, are reacted with carbon four oxide and aluminum hydroxide, which precipitates aluminum hydroxide, leaving the sodium silicate. Then aluminum hydroxide is heated to form the aluminum oxide. So that's, that's the process of extracting aluminum. So quickly, let's go through some of the properties of aluminum. So aluminum is a silvery, uh, metal which usually tarnishes very quickly when um, 
exposed to the air because of the formation of the oxide layer and then it has very low densities that's why it can be able to be rolled into wires as you can see from the image it is a good conductor of heat and electricity because it has three delocalized electrons as we discussed in form two so we said it's actually one of the best uh, metals in terms of conductivity and heat so some of the chemical properties aluminium usually uh, tarnishes very quickly when uh, it is exposed so for the reaction to occur the oxide layer needs to be removed so steel wool or wood hash should not be used with aluminium utensils and salty water usually attacks the oxide film allowing the aluminium to corrode and for this reason um, aluminium is not used for marine purposes so aluminium will burn in air to form its oxide and nitride so aluminium reacts with nitrogen in air and it also reacts with oxygen in air so it forms aluminium oxide and aluminium nitride remember this is only possible when the coating is removed so that um, and it's done at very high temperatures and aluminium also reacts with acid um, but not all acids because of the aluminium oxide layer when it's react to be, when you react it with nitric acid it doesn't have any effect at any concentration this is because nitric acid is a very strong oxidizing layer so it's actually thickened the oxide layer so it prevents further reaction but with sulfuric acid hot concentrated sulfuric acid can be able to react with the oxide layer and when it's react with the oxide aluminium it forms aluminium sulfate, water, and sulfur oxide. So with hydrochloric acid, aluminium will dissolve slowly to liberate hydrogen. That is, means it's going to form aluminium chloride and hydrogen gas. And then when it reacts with concentrated uh, hydrochloric acid, the reaction actually becomes faster because of the increase in the ions in solution. So, and then finally, reaction with chlorine, aluminium burns in chlorine uh, gas with a white light forming aluminium chloride. So these ones are usually cool, uh, in the cooler parts. They're actually sublime in nature. They, are, they have, they sublime. And the apparatus for pre preparation of, of aluminium chloride is dry because what happens it hydrolyzes in water to form hydrochloric acid mm -hmm. remember we talked about this when we were discussing period three most of these properties mm -hmm. is a repetition of what we have discussed before can go back and check how aluminium um, chloride hydrolyzes in solution and then it reacts with uh, cold water actually doesn't react with cold water because of the coating but if you remove the coating it's going to react with cold water slowly and then it also reacts with sodium hydroxide remember it is um amphoteric in nature so it can react with sodium hydroxide to form sodium aluminate um finally uses of aluminium this is a very common question in regards of aluminium it is good that you understand some of these properties of aluminium that makes it to be widely used it's used to make airplanes uh, railway trucks buses tankers furniture this is because it's very light due to its low density this is a very common question that is placed in exam it's also used in making utensils like our sufferias are made of aluminium this is because it's first of all good conductor of electricity and heat and also it doesn't corrode like it doesn't react with steam it doesn't react with water because of the coating and then it is also used to make overhead cables because it's a good conductor of electricity remember we said about the three delocalized electrons really make it a very good conductor and then it is light it's very light and it can be made like into wires can be drawn into wires and then aluminium powder mixed with oil is used as a protective paint and it is also used to make aluminium oil due to its malleability it can be hammered to form sheets this um, is used in cooking and packaging so that's it with aluminium
make sure you go through back uh, in the process again understand how aluminium the ores of aluminium are purified and then also the electrolysis method check out more questions in the website so i can help you to understand and to revise more see you in the next lesson